hey welcome once again to this video so we i'm going to explain on how you can handle the callbacks from the stk push now this callback remember when we triggered the stk push here this uh we entered the callback as this now for you uh in uh, in our case we will create a callback here this callback uh where if you have hosted your application you will write the callback here here for example if you have hosted it here in this domain you will write a callback as this if your app is running like on this domain so when this uh, url loads it will run this uh it will run these uh these function here so you need to create here a route or a view where you can create a url where here you will add the callback url when this reloads it will uh it will load this function now when a user enters his sdk push he will receive the callback the json data the uh in this uh, file where it will store it as Mpesa SDK response. So when you host this Django application on a live server because this callback needs to be on a live server. So you can come here to the documentation and see here stimulate the SDK uh, for example and see the type of JSON that will be sent in every successful or cancelled or failed transaction you will receive the JSON in that file so in that url which is callback so unsuccessful a successful transaction you will receive this so this is the json data this is for example this is the json data when this will be reloaded from the sdk push it will create this json data so for example this let me create a new file here let me create a new file and store it uh let me write json uh then let me do this i don't know why it's refusing let's say if it is there stk push response then this is the json data this is the the data that is here this one is the one that will be sent to your callback url in form of this so this is what uh, i think i've missed uh i've missed of mr uh, here so that's this is the json data that you will get when this url loads so if you want to get the merchant id this is where you can get it uh, you can get this is how you can get it and this will be the variable for that checkout id then the transaction id this of which the transaction id is this if you want the transaction this is how you can get the transaction id so when you host your website this is where this is the callback this is where the callback will be handled so you can see from this uh from uh from this documentation it means when it is zero it means it is successful when the callback uh, the result code from the callback data you get it if it is zero it means it is successful now you can write here if it if the result code is zero then uh store uh, let me do this uh, then uh store the transaction detail in the database so this is where you will add your transaction data in the database if you want this if you want the uh if you want um if you want the checkout id to store the checkout id this is why you will handle it you will connect the database and store it so remember the key points here are that the callback should be online and the callback as you said is the one that will reload this by adding the url here for your app which is hosted online i think that point is understood if if you feel like you need more explanation you can uh add the you can comment on the section i can explain it further if you need my number i'll share it there but this is the important part because you know while integrating the mpesa sdk on your system you might not know how to handle if this transaction is successful or it's not but this is the case where you will handle it the other way i'll teach it in the other video so 
please subscribe and hit the notification bell remember i'm doing most of the things i'm teaching things but uh this is a uh, this is where i'm going to reach on the python uh python course i will proceed with the other videos now see you in the next video bye